in this rural area of the Hunter Valley, a quiet revolution in education is taking place. Many people think that the most important function of education is to gain knowledge and skills. So why would Tokal Agricultural College want to change that? We've changed our teaching completely to problem-based learning, which really means that students get involved in their own learning on practical issues. And from that, they learn a certain amount of knowledge, but they also learn skills and attitudes. And it's the skills and attitudes that problem-based learning aims to instill in, in our graduates. Things like students having to use their initiative, taking responsibility for their own learning, for their own actions, honesty, integrity, a love of agriculture, care for the environment, all those sorts of things which you can't learn in a lecture-based situation. What really is it that, uh, that makes the method of teaching here and the approach to, to education different from perhaps some other sort of college? The education here is more is student-centred rather than teacher-centred. In most places you go to, people sit, sit in large groups in lectures and the teacher is the centre of the learning process. Right. But at Toko we try and very much put the responsibility for their learning back on the students themselves. So you're really there as a, as a facilitator, yeah. and as a co-learner rather than as a, as a lecturer or, or subject expert, which has been a, a big, a big change, change of role for, for all of us here at the college. What would have been something that, that you used to do in one way that now you do completely differently? We'd have a timetable that had uh, six one-hour lectures a day mm. and the students would go in, they'd have an hour of sheep, an hour of horticulture, an hour of animal health. Now, and we would stand up the front and talk to them, but now the students are involved in it. We don't have those lectures. They spend the week on a topic instead of maybe two or three hours through the week. So it's a concentrated effort. Feeding the herd's a classic example of that, where the students actually have to, they're given a plot of land, they've got to work out the, the feed they want off it, the fertiliser, the seed they've got to put into it, the methods they're doing it. We've got a heap of ryegrass here. There's not enough nitrogen as well. Maybe frost in the morning? I find the interesting parts of this, this type of teaching is the fact that we can actually deal with the students, learn with the students, and actually discuss a lot of the problems with the students. So we are actually tending to solve some of the problems along with them. And uh, from that point of view, we're also learning. And uh, that part is probably one of the best parts of it as far as we're concerned. Well, it could be shading the loosen too much in the night. We sort of went through a bit of a trial and error sort of thing, like chose a few species and then read up on them. What sort of ones went best? Just general knowledge that each of us had. Yeah. We just put in the, into the decisions and chose what the best one might have been. Well, it hasn't grown, obviously, as good as the plot next door. To improve it, we should have put more oats in, yeah. The difference between the lecture-based system and problem-based learning is that students actually have to participate. Lecturing is a very passive activity and uh, they don't learn very much and research has shown time and time again that's happened. Extreme weight? In the traditional system, theory is over there and practical is here. But with problem-based learning, we try to bring them both together. Can that balance exist in a non-natural environment? Because we're sort of—it's not a natural. But they're making a natural environment. But you can't make a natural environment out of something that wasn't natural first off, can you? <laughs> the skills they learn are lifelong, and they can keep implementing and improving those skills throughout their life. One of the sessions we do is what we call team building, where we, we take them out of the classroom and out, and we go out camping on the college for, for four days, and we just have different group tasks, none of them are related to agriculture. So the emphasis is purely on what's happening in the group and, and the communication, the problem solving, the decision making, the sharing of information. And how to um, take on board everybody else's ideas, so it's not just the lecturer giving you all the ideas, you're learning from all the people in your group as well, which, who come from a wide range of backgrounds and experiences. <laughs> What is it that, that being in a group uh, allows you to do that maybe if you were just by yourself you wouldn't get the chance to do? Um, you're allowed to put in your own input on ideas and get group ideas together and possibly come up with a better 
alternative to a, to a problem. Yeah. The teachers will tell you, sit down, learn this, do that. Is that how it works here? Oh, not really, because they sort of, they'll show you first in the classroom and then you might come out to the sheep yards and then you've got to do it yourself. All right, so it's heaps better. So do you, do you find that the teachers actually leave you to your own devices to sort things out? Yeah, yeah pretty well. You learn from your mistakes. I found it very difficult the first well, six months I was here because I had all this high technology that I really wanted to transfer onto some students and give them all the stuff that was really happening there. That was a few years ago. That sort of thing that I've been teaching then is out of date now. So I think it's more important actually to be able to be flexible. And I think in case studies, the way we run our case studies, we can change them each year to suit. Whereas we had a traditional teaching role, then we would probably stick with that same teaching role until it was well out of date. There's still a role in our system for the expert driven mode and for people um, playing the role of the expert but now it's within the context of a real life situation or a real life problem where it's relevant you've had a look at her yeah. teeth what is she tell me she's um got permanent teeth she's how many permanent teeth eight Right on. Next one, please. Take health students have a very broad spectrum of the of the rural industry, and they have been um, schooled in all phases of that industry, which makes it quite easy for them to fit into our workplace at home. We've been taking the Take health students for approximately 10-15 um, years, and I have found over the years they have improved out of sight. Check her out. I know if I get a Take health student. I can set them off to do a job and they can do it. Take health students are excellent. There is a lot of emphasis on attitude and reliability, um, punctuality. If you're getting a TOCAL graduate, as well as getting that attitude and reliability, well, you're also getting um, somebody who's, who's um, had some um, academic training and some practical training. So you, you've got a, a more upmarket person all around. Do you have a, a, a particular challenge in assessing just how well people have done when they've gone through the college? It's a different assessing. I mean, under the traditional system, you're really assessing memory and, and recall. You're, you're not assessing much more. In fact, one of the impetuses that, that uh, drove us to really changing the system was um, reassessing people a few months later after their real exam was over under the old system yeah. and the results were, were shattering from our point of view. We've, we've certainly had lots of feedback from graduates. We do a quality assurance survey of graduates and employers and parents and current students every year and uh, that's, that's given us some excellent results and it's also showed us some areas that we need to work on and we've done that. But it's very hard to compare graduates from the old system who have been out a fair bit longer, uh, 12 or 13 years now, yeah with graduates from the new system. Um, we think it's working, the farmers tell us it's working, all of our graduates get jobs which shows us that something's going right but it's very hard to prove. They come out of this realising that they have to keep learning for the rest of their lives to, being able to, to be able to keep up and keep adapting to change, that it's not a kit of skills that we give them and, and that's it for the rest of their career. The power of problem-based learning is its ability to encourage new ways of thinking. As a result, no matter what career changes TOCAL graduates face in the future, they're well equipped to think issues through, to communicate and to succeed.